Friends, welcome. Let us learn the stop and chop technique of fecal emulsification. This is a cataract with grade 2 nuclear sclerosis and it is a nice case for stop and chop technique. If the cataract is harder, grade 3 or grade 4, you go for divide and concur technique. When the cataract is soft, you go for stop and chop technique. And now let us see the main incision in slow motion. Make a groove on the posterior aspect of the limbus. Advance forward for some distance and then go downward and make this nice incision. And now a side port is made on the left side of the main incision. This is in real speed. And now an air bubble is injected to fill off the anterior chamber. The aqueous is replaced by the air bubble. And now tripan blue dye is applied over the anterior capsule so that visibility becomes good and you can do a nice rexus. This is a bit of adrenaline. The dye is nicely washed out and then viscoelastic substance. In this case it is 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose is injected through the main incision to fill off the anterior chamber. And now, capsulorexis. I am doing the rexis with the iterator of horseps. The anticapsule is torn, a capsular tag is raised. This capsular tag is guided all around to get an adequate size rexis of about 5 mm in this case. The size of the rexis should not be less than 5 mm. It can be anything between 5 mm and 6 mm. And now hydro dissection is done. For divide and concoid technique, we need not do hydro delineation, but there is no harm if you do it. For carousel technique, we should do a uh, hydro delineation. And for carousel technique, the rex six should be a little larger. In this case, we are going to do the stop and chop technique, so the rex six can be five millimeter. And now sculpting. First. This is real speed and this sculpting making the groove and dividing the nucleus into two halves. I'm going to show in slow motion after this real speed. First some superficial cortical lens matter is removed. This will improve your visibility greatly. And now make the bevel up and now start making the group, making the trench. And now see how the trench is made. You never push the nucleus towards the opposite equator. You use vacuum and energy and simultaneously you move forward so that your cutting speed is equal to your forward movement. What I mean is, let us see this in slow motion and this because this is a very important step, making the groove and then dividing the nucleus in two halves. This is 50% speed. Sculpt, at this time the vacuum is 50 to 80 millimeter of mercury flow rate is 20 ml per minute and ultrasonic energy is anywhere between 50% to 60%. So this is the first sculpt. Now when we sculpt we must remember that the nucleus is thicker at the center and thinner at the periphery. So we will go 
diff at the central part then gradually we c will come upward as we go near the equator if we don't remember this we can pierce through the lens mass and we can even pierce the posterior capsule so at the center we will go deep and then we will gradually come upward some was sculpted after rotating the nucleus 180 degree and now see how to divide the nucleus go at the floor of the groove and then use the tip of the fecal needle and the chopper apply opposite forces and the nucleus gets divided into two heminuclei. Now it is easy emulsify each heminucleus with ultrasonic energy go to FECO 2 mode where the vacuum is more according to your experience you can start with 250 or 300 millimeter of mercury vacuum in this case I have used 400 millimeter of mercury vacuum and 40 ml permanent fluoride so nucleus and epinucleus has been managed and now cortex is to be cleaned when the size of the rexis is small the removal of subincisional cortex may be difficult in some cases and in such cases we can use bimanual irrigation aspiration or we have to make another sideboard to remove the subincisional cortex we are going to see that in a short time through the main incision we have removed most of the cortex someone asked me why I use visco at this time as you use visco the visco comes out gradually and you get time to remove the cortex through the main incision the antechamber remains formed if you fill up the antechamber with visco and now see I'm trying to remove the subincisional cortex. I've tried it didn't come out. So I'm making another incision at around seven o'clock and now I go through the seven o'clock and remove the cortex very easily. This may not be necessary in all cases and if the size of the rexis is little larger than this, it may come out through the left side port also, but in this case I had to make another side port. And now is the time to implant an intraocular lens. I'm going to enlarge the main wound a little bit because the it becomes easy and the wound gets less stressed if we enlarge the main wound by a fraction of a millimeter. Here goes the intraocular lens. and the lens is placed in the capsular bag. This is a hydrophobic acrylic single piece monofocal aspheric intraocular lens. I practice in an area where the patients usually cannot afford premium lenses like toric lenses, multifocal lenses. So most of my patients uh, for this kind of lenses and now the side ports are closed by hydrating corneal stroma and now this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber we we'll go behind the eye well and remove the visco from the capsular bag this is very important though it was hydro implantation and there was very little of visco now the integrity of all the wounds are checked few drops of moxie is applied over the cornea and the case is concluded thank you very much for your attention hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills this is uh, particularly for beginner surgeons who are who have done few cases and trying to learn these techniques divide and conquer or this technique stop and chop, chop technique always remember that when the uh, nucleus sclerosis is grade 2 or between grade 2 and grade 3 this is the technique stop and chop
if it is little harder grade 3 or grade 4 you can go for divide and concur technique